Schools uh, set down for a second reading and a report on the complaint regarding the 2011 legal services regulations is set down by consideration. Are there any bills for that? There are no bills for introduction. The House then comes to the questions for oral answer. And the first question stands in the name of the question. Mr. Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Finance. What reports has he received on the government's financial position? Mr. Speaker, uh, last week Treasury published the financial statements for the 10 months uh, ending 30th of April. It shows an operating balance before uh, gains and losses about 1.4 billion better than forecast. Uh, while this was encouraging, it's only one set of monthly figures uh, which fluctuate from month to month. The government remains focused on spending discipline to stay on track to surplus in 2014-15 uh, as we make a moderate adjustment compared to most countries back to surplus. Supplementary question. How does the government's financial position compare to those of other countries? Well, Mr Speaker, while, uh, while uh, we have had some tight budgets uh, that do require uh, changes if we are going to produce more public services for less, uh, any number of other countries, including Australia and Australian states, are making uh, much, more, uh, much harsher adjustments to their public spending through reductions in family entitlements, large-scale redundancies in their public services and the reduction of public services. We don't have to take those measures. Supplementary question. What reports has he received endorsing the government's economic program? Well, Mr Speaker, um, la last week the IMF, International Monetary Fund, issued its report on New Zealand for 2012. It noted that uh, if we get back to surplus by 2014-15, that would put New Zealand in a better position to deal with future shocks and take pressure off both interest rates and the exchange rate. It also noted that the New Zealand banking sector remains sound. Uh, by comparison with other countries, this means we are in a fairly good position uh, for moderate growth. Supplementary question. What other approaches to managing the government's finances is he aware of? Well, Mr Speaker, I've seen a number of other reports uh, around uh, suggesting considerable extra government spending, uh, and of course that would have to be uh, paid for by, by more government debt, uh, such as uh, borrowing to pay for reducing retirement age to 60 for many workers, uh, paying for the doubling of paid Pay parental tax leave cuts, Bill. and bringing back the R&D tax credit, all Labor Party policies. Pay your tax cuts. Uh, in view of the turmoil in the Eurozone and the serious implications for the New Zealand economy if the crisis deepens and further impacts the global financial markets, Australia's growth rate 300 per cent higher than that of New Zealand as it marched this year. Does he not consider it imperative that the Reserve Bank has the appropriate powers to deal with such a potentially dangerous macroeconomic condition? Uh, Mr Speaker, that is, a, I think, a, a good question in the circumstances. The Reserve Bank uh, does, I believe it does have sufficient powers to deal with uh, a significant, very significantly negative international event. Those were tested uh, unexpectedly back in 2008, and since then there's been considerable work done uh, by the Reserve Bank, both on its own capacities and how they link with those of the Australian uh, Reserve Bank and bank regulators, and I think they are in reasonable shape uh, to handle um, some significant negative event. Uh, point of order, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, I seek leave of the House to have the Reserve Bank of New Zealand amending primary function of Bank Amendment Bill, which is in my name, withdrawn from the members' ballot and, and sorry, drawn from the members' ballot and introduced to the House following the question time today. Leave us sort that course of action. Is there any objection? There is a Question number two, the Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Prime Minister does...